Hi, this is Graham Allen coming to you from London in the UK and this is a contest entry for a great channel, Glenn Calloway from The Basement and he's asked us to show three progressive rock albums. Uh, a lot of my collection is progressive rock, a lot of it is jazz fusion so this wasn't difficult but I thought I'd show something um, just maybe a little bit left field rather than the main stuff. I've got an enormous Emerson, Lake and Palmer collection. They're my favourite band. And I think Glenn has just picked up pictures at an exhibition on the Cotillion label, which is the American uh, label, and is going to be listening to that because I don't think he's heard it. So, Glenn, I hope, uh, I hope you're enjoying Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Uh, I just also want to mention another great channel that I always watch sort of with Glenn, Glenn's channel, which is Robert's On My Turntable, uh, also based up in Canada. Uh, wonderful sort of avuncular style with his coffee, coffee mornings. And um, great collection. And I know he has some progressive rock, um, but he's also got loads of classic rock and blues rock and hard rock and stuff like that. So without further ado, number one is <coughs> uh, Eddie Jobson. Um, who uh, people will know from um, Roxy Music, uh, Curved Air, uh, Frank Zappa, um, probably best known for his work with UK, with John Wetton, uh, Bill Bruford, Alan Holdsworth, and then Terry Bozio. This was his solo album after UK split up. So this is 1980. Uh, it's a wonderful album, very progressive, Eddie Jobson's Zinc. Um, Eddie Jobson actually sings on this album. He's not got the strongest uh, voices, but it works really well. Uh, the, the keyboards are very much 80s, and in fact, the production is quite 80s, uh, but some terrific tracks on here. Um, very progressive sort of direction. Um, modern, a sort of modern 80s update of, of the UK keyboard sound and it's got some great players on here, particularly great drumming from a guy called Mark Barsimanto. Um, really, really wonderful album. Um, so that is on uh, the Capitol Records label, um, his own unique um, label there with the, the green um, sort of pyramid. So that's Eddie Jobson's Zinc, uh, wonderful cover. There he is on the back. Um, yeah, great, great keyboard driven progressive rock. Number two, um, just sort of gets into the progressive rock um, tag here. A lot of people will know this. Cozy Powell's first debut album, Over the Top. So Cozy, very well known as a sort of hard rock drummer with people like Rainbow, uh, went on to play with people like Whitesnake, Michael Schenker, but of course had a wonderful uh, one-off album with Keith Emerson and Greg Lake, Emerson, Lake and Powell. This album is from 1979 and is wonderfully recorded on his Yamaha um, stainless steel shell kit or stainless, she stainless steel covered uh, kit. Um, Stella... Um, cast on here, Jack Bruce on bass, play some wonderful fretless bass on this. Max Middleton and Don Airy, who people will know, um, Don Airy from Rainbow. And on guitar, we have Clem Clemson, who played with Coliseum. This is a terrific uh, album. Quite keyboard driven, but some fiery guitar from uh, Clem Clemson and Gary Moore. Uh, there's a great final track called Over the Top, which is the 1812 Overture. Cozy inserts a wonderful drum solo into that. Um, but just a great, great in your face album. This is on the Areola label, a uh, German sort of label. Um, and it's just a wonderful drum led, uh, but very progressive. Um, album. So that's Cozy Power over the top. Okay, um, next is a German band um, I've mentioned before on my channel. This is Triumvirate, Old Loves Die Hard. This is 1976. Um, Triumvirate really filled a bit of a gap, uh, in my opinion, where Emerson, Lake and Palmer were very much taking a hi hiatus between 1975 and 1977, before Works came out. And Triumvirate released um, a number of extremely strong albums, 
uh, in, in that mid 70s period. So keyboard trio driven rock, progressive rock with Jürgen Fritz um, on keyboards, uh, m some great Moog synthesizer playing. Uh, the vocals are a little bit uh, a little bit weak at times on this, but the ensemble playing is very good. Um, and um, it really is um, a great sort of era for that keyboard driven progressive rock. Um, this is a bit of a beat copy I got recently and is on the uh, Horzu label, um, which is Gemma, Gemma Horzu label. Um, it's a German, German pressing actually. So that's Triumvirate, All Loves Die Hard. Um, actually it says EMI Electrola as well, um, if anyone's trying to find this. And last up, I know it's supposed to be three, but I had to go for four. This one is quite quite hard to get and it's quite an unusual, um, not, not well-known band on the, in the vinyl community. This is a band called After the Fire, UK band, and the album is Signs of Change. Now this band are known to some people because they really changed their sound after this debut album. Uh, in 1979 to a much more synth pop sound uh, led by Peter Banks, Peter Memory Banks on keyboards, who switched from Hammond, uh, Mini Moog, Krumar keyboards on this, very traditional sort of sound and wonderful Hammond player, wonderful Moog player as well. Uh, but he switched to the Yamaha CS80 and it gave it that much more sort of poppy early 80s sound. So a lot of people just don't know about this album. Um, and the lineup was slightly different. Uh, we've got Nick Battle on bass. Andy Piercy was uh, the vocalist all the way through and a guy called Ivor Twiddle on drums. Uh, this is a wonderful uh, album. Organic sound, slightly lo-fi sound at times, but it's got some great compositions, great lyrics. Um, it's quite expensive, this, uh, on Discogs. Uh, and it's on, it was a limited press on Rapid Records in the UK. Uh, and as I said, they changed direction after this album. Um, so um, we've got uh, a lyric sheet here. And strangely, uh, the, there is an extra track um, which doesn't have the lyrics on the official lyric sheet, um, which was released on the CD uh, later, uh, the extra tracks. Um, but Signs of Change, which is uh, a kind of a, a Moog frenzy on this album, for some reason the lyrics don't appear on this um, official lyric sheet. And bizarrely, this copy, somebody's actually handwritten the whole of the lyrics um, for Signs of Change. There they are. Um, I actually wrote to Peter Banks, the keyboard player, uh, and mentioned that I got a copy, and I wondered if this is a member of the band's copy originally. Um, anyway, that's a great album, Signs of Change, After the Fire. Okay, that's it. Hope you're having a good day, and um, good luck to Glenn.